Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaias is here from uh, the Automator. And we were we just did a video talking about object-oriented programming versus cloud, uh, I say cloud, versus <laughs> functional slash procedural um, yes. languages. And it, it dawned on me, I was having a chat with Jackie Stuck the other day about our, our new course, which um, it's, we're getting ready to launch it. So check it out if you're interested. If you sign up now, you get 15% off when we finally put it on the market. Anyway, um, I was saying how I thought it was really interesting that, you know, there's a lot of great code on the forum that are just functions um, yeah. and they're older ones. Um, and that, you know, there's there's also a lot of great stuff for classes. And this is why I, it came up because I was asking Jackie for some examples of the classes that he used. But what dawned on me was like, you know, there are some of these things that have been around for a long time, they're still functions and people didn't, you know, they're, they, they're not classes. And I'm like, okay, well, that that's proof to show you that there is a lot of stuff you can do just with functions alone. Um, <laughs> but what dawned on me was, wait a minute, you know, auto hockey isn't a static thing, right? Like back in the old days, it was the vanilla um, ANSI version that didn't have the dot notation object on your programming. And do you have that image, Andy? Yes, yes. So this is what I have at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So that very top one, that was where it was just, you know, very vanilla. Now it was it was a cool program. Don't get me wrong, right? Like I, I was starting to use it. Um, and that was, let's see, the beginning was around 2003. That is and right. Where did the auto hockey L around the date was that? I think you said. Yeah, so that, well, um, according to what I could see directly on GitHub, because that's the thing, in GitHub itself, the first commit that shows up publicly here is in 2015, okay? But reading the history of it, there was a page, uh, there's a page that uh, talks a little bit about it. Uh, it is already on 2009, more or less, Okay. Um, around 2009, there was already a movement for AutoHotKey L. So basically, AutoHotKey L is really old. And if we go ahead and take a look at back at the at the idea here, what is going on is that AutoHotKey Classic was first of all very functional, procedural, right? Everything was functions. Um, it didn't have any support for objects, and it didn't have support for 64 bit uh, either. So even the Unicode. arrays, I remember they were the pseudo arrays, correct? Yes, or... and there were pseudo arrays. You didn't even have that, right? So at some point, uh, Steve Gray started, started actually kind of like developing about, uh, around objects. That was kind of like the thing that he wanted to bring onto AutoHotKey, which was not there. Now, not everybody liked that. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody wanted a very no simple change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not only that, because the idea behind Auto Hotkey was something very simple yeah. to create hotkeys, and hence the name, right? So when you start adding classes and adding, you know, Unicode support or uh, uh, 64 encoding support, now you're actually making the program a little bit more general than what it actually was at the beginning. Auto hotkey was specifically for creating hotkeys and hot strings in a very simple way. That was the idea. But now uh, with, with Auto hotkey L, which now is becoming the main branch, well, has become the main branch of Auto hotkey, then you can program just about everything you want. Okay. So, well, I was just thinking, not that we have to go there, but you think about what everything you just said, and now think about version two. Right, which right. is the, almost the exact same thing we were saying before too. It brings, it tightens it up even more, you know, into a programming language, which those that really like the simplicity of it before are going to complain about this and that. I, I'm really kind of on the fence. I see the benefits. I also liked how easy it was to use, you know, um, for for noobs. But mm -hmm. anyway, we don't have to go there. But no. can you go back to the the page that talked about? Because or maybe I'll just I could just read it here. But it was really interesting where it just said. You know, it brought in such things as Unicode, COM, arrays, objects. Like that was the, what the stuff L brought right. in. Right. Like yes. Like those. I remember. So when I was first using Auto Hotkey, I used it for three or so years doing hot keys and hot strings with the vanilla version, right? And I didn't know anything about it. Didn't care. Thought I was amazing, and I was because I got stuff done faster. But <laughs> then I started 
learning web scraping and I would stumble on the posts and, and the syntax was so different and it was really confusing to me. And what I didn't realize at the time was one of them was for the version, you know, um, the vanilla and the other one was for L. And even though I didn't know anything about programming, I could see how much easier and more intuitive the syntax for L using objects was compared to what we had to do with the vanilla. I mean, it was night and exactly. day, <laughs> like, there's no question about it. Um, but it, it's so funny that in hindsight now to be thinking that of like, wow, you know, I, I totally yes. get how, yeah. That is right. So in general, the most of the big things that they added at that time, um, around that time, was to make the language a little bit more flexible. Because as I mentioned, AutoHotKey Classic was very, very specific. It was a for, it, it is kind of like talking about a hammer, right? You want to make hotkeys, this is the language. You want to make, to type fast, this is the language. Yep. Now, and, and of course, you could do anything else because you can, for example, you know, saw or cut a wood in half with a hammer. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be pretty, but you can do it. And, and, yeah, you can, you can just hammer in until the, until the wood breaks. You can have it. It's not going to be a very good idea, though. So when Steve Gray came in and said, like, okay, hold on, it is a hammer, but if we change this, 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 and that, it can also be a saw, okay? And so you can hammer and saw at the same time. He was like, not many people like the idea. Change is hard, you know, but in the end, now everybody see the benefits of it. They say, like, okay, hold on. Now I can create more complex programs. Also, I can also I can create hotkeys very quickly, but now I can do very very interesting stuff with com objects, which I couldn't do yeah. at all without a hotkey classic. I was so, gonna tweak what you said and say, now I can do more advanced things, actually simpler. So it's not more complex. Code. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's what objects give you. It, it really right, does. right. Now think about it. What did our hotkey classic have to connect to the internet? You had the URL download to file. Yeah. Yeah. You had the URL download to file, but there were not many, there were no functions to you say like connect to this website and get me the page. When Steve Gray said like, okay, let's open com objects. You automatically have a com object that does that for you. And it is easy syntax for you to use. That's what uh, Auto Hotkey L really did. And, um, Again, you could do everything without a hotkey classic. The only thing is that there were certain things that were really complex to do. That was all. Now, it's really fascinating because this wasn't my plan, but mm -hmm. it actually really reinforces the whole thing of the, the course we made on classes and objects, right? Yes. Is yeah, you could you could still program in auto hotkey and not learn classes and objects and still yeah, you can. amazing stuff. However, yeah. it does make it so much simpler. And I think I don't know if I was talking to you. I think I was talking to someone else about it. I said, it was really weird to me the other day you and I were talking. I don't think I mentioned it, but um, I've been using objects, uh, like com objects for mm -hmm. a long time. Like the when HP request doing API calls, um, mm -hmm. using email. And it never really dawned on me to me until I was watching our course, your, you know, your class stuff, that the methods in a class, like it's all the same thing, you know, like just the, the com object itself is just a class, but it, it, it never, yeah. it never <laughs> basically, basically the class is kind of like a blueprint. The object is just like what we created for that blueprint. So you have a blueprint to build a house. Mm -hmm. The blueprint is the class. The house would be the object. Right. Plain yep. and simple. Right. So but the then fact that you can use methods and, and, you know, it just, it makes it, it really does make it so much easier. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because I didn't, I didn't before have I, my arguments mostly for saying you should learn classes was it opens up the door for you to do, use all these other classes. Cause, cause there's some great stuff out there, but mm -hmm. if you don't know classes, you can't necessarily use them, but 
there was you at one point said it, it allows you to use dot notation object oriented yeah. coding and i said i do really like that <laughs> and, it, and that was i think about where somewhere that put a seed in my brain so later when i was watching this things and really all of a sudden i'm like that you know okay i get now it now. I, exactly yeah, it really <laughs> so, uh, so, so right now uh one of the things that i um i like about auto hotkey is uh, the way how it's going, generalizing the language is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Some people might not like it. I understand why they don't like it. Again, but everyone, if we, everyone yeah, likes to. Yeah. But in general, allowing you to make stuff in an easier manner is always a good idea. That's all. Now, the fact that for you might be a little bit complex to learn at the beginning it's annoying it's work people don't want to work that's okay i get it but after you get the point like why that is a good thing you might not want to go back so just just imagine joe would you want to try to use auto hotkey classic to go ahead and do api calls when you don't have the http request object oh man <laughs> and i remember and i remember you remember the function that uh, the Raphael actually created? Yeah, 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 the one that I made a video on, right? He yeah. had to build a function because there was no function. Now, yeah. just think that he was a guy that was above average. He could create yeah. a function. Not everybody could create a function. So everybody yeah. had the door closed up to that point. And then this guy said, look, hold on. Let me, let me make a function. Let me share it. If he hadn't shared it, we would have been like, we, we couldn't connect to the internet. And the right. ones who didn't know how to do it, for example. Yeah. Well, at it, that it, time it, I had no clue. The, the video we did the other day on uh, the, the thing that, that with, with Dimitri about creating the structs and creating the other things, you know, that, that yes. allows it, makes it easier, gives you the syntax for connecting to the DLL calls, right? Yes. Like it's yes. kind of that bridge of like, hey, now there's kind of an easy, you know, here's a template for you, you know, that you can borrow from. And, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's, Kind of peeking inside the box a little. Does that make sense? Yes, you know, of course. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm loving. I'm getting there with class. Like I said, I've understood them for years. It was just I didn't write them myself. But I'm starting to. And, and the in the videos in our course, the ones where we you show how to take a class, uh, or excuse me, a function, um, and convert it into a class, and how really similar they are. You know, it's yeah. There's a lot of extra stuff you can do. But when you show how similar they are, it, it it's much easier per, to grasp. It's not all this crazy stuff. You don't have to learn that all at the front, right? You learn those, baby step into those, add to your knowledge, you know. After that the is the main point, is baby stepping through it. It is happening more and more. And uh, in the graph that we were looking at, I just noticed that out of hotkey H and out of hotkey L are kind of like merging in out of hotkey version two. And that is great because remember that out of hotkey age, what brings is multi threading. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that is something that we're missing. And a yeah. lot of little other details, like for example, out of hotkey age has the unsorted map. So okay. remember that when I created like a map and it's always yeah. sorted, and I'm like, oh, come on. You know? right. So there's a lot of little details that when they merge, you're going to have a new version of out of hotkey. It has a few little things that it's going to be annoying to learn, but in the end, it's going to be nice because it's making the language easier to use. For example, what you were talking about, the structures, the reason why not many people understand them and why it's so annoying is because the language itself, out of hotkey itself, doesn't have an easy way for you to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is really complicated with the num get, num put, num. Yeah, the, right. Right. In version two, there was a step forward in that direction with the buffer because the buffer will do that for you. That's, that's one of the steps. So again, those little changes, the ones that we're talking about, and it reflected on bringing com objects to auto hotkey at that time, that long time ago, they're happening again, but with different topics, of course, annoying to learn, complicated okay but once you get it it's going to be nice <laughs> if there was just a course out there that helped us learn, uh, okay. <laughs> exactly but right. we are going to be talking about those things later on so yeah. awesome Great. thank you you're welcome